History records that the invasion, which was to liberate Europe from the German army, began in July of 1944. D-Day was already behind us. We'd stormed the beaches and fought through the hedgerows and reached the rubble of village streets. For a while, we thought it was going to be a walkover, but 30 miles inland between the towns of Saint-Lô and Perrier, we ran into it. A wall of German men and guns planted there by De Fuhrer with one order, hold or die. Well, the Germans didn't have any corner on giving orders. We issued an order of our own, break through. And so on July 27th, the Allied armies swung all the way from the floor we hit the west wall with everything we had. Lightning Joe Collins' seventh corps showing the way. It took three long, never forgotten days, but the wall cracked, and the crack became a hole, and the hole a doorway. And through the door, more armor poured into France than the Germans knew existed. General Courtney Hodges' first army moved east toward the Seine. Field Marshal Monty Montgomery's 21st army group took a cut north heading for Antwerp. And General George S. Patton's third army well, Georgie took his tanks, his men, added a dash of his private brand of courage, and led them straight up the center for Paris. Hey, knock it off, you jerk! You feel like making some noise? Get down the road and join the war! I'll give you ten seconds to get out of there! Yeah? Well, I'll give you just 10 seconds to knock that racket off before I give you a punch right in the... Good morning, sir. I hope I didn't break up a crap game, Lieutenant. No, sir. Why are you lying doggo here in the road? Are you lost or afraid of both? Neither, sir. It's just that we only had one can of gas left and I thought we'd save it. Save it for what? You can't win a war against enemy you don't capture or terrain you don't take. So get back in that tank and start moving. Yes, sir. Burn up our last can of gas, then what? Ah, oh, maybe there's some gas stations along the road somewhere. Oh, sure. This is a regular Route 66. Free air, free water, and registered restrooms. Yeah. They wash your windshield with an 88 millimeter shell. Well, why don't they send up those backline supply troops? Are you kidding, those jokers? If you expect them to keep up with old blood and guts, I'll bet my bottom stripe we take Berlin with slingshots. Charlie, they got another cartoon in here about General Gordon. I'd give $20 to see his face when he sees... Get your money up, Lieutenant. I hope it was worth it. Now get on that telephone and get to the advanced section of the communication zone, Colonel Carter. It's in Le Mans. Yes, sir. Make the call, Corporal. Yes, sir. This is Tippecanoe 6. Give me Tata forward. This is a high priority call. Get that? A high priority call. I want Colonel Carter for Major General Lee Gordon on General Patton's staff. Yeah, yeah. Who is it? This is Major General Lee Gordon speaking. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, General. Can you hear me? Doesn't make any difference whether I can hear you because you're not going to be doing any of the talking. Ten days ago, you told me that supplies were being sent up. Well, where are they? Uh, uh, well, you see, sir... Uh... I'm fed up with promises. I want gasoline, and gasoline, and more gasoline. And I want small caliber ammunition and rations, and I want them sent up here as fast as you can get them to me. I know how you feel, General, but your outfit's been moving four times as fast as anybody thought it would. We'll catch up to you eventually. Eventually? Get me those supplies! And up! Here's the situation, man. That is. In the 23 days since the Allied troops broke their way through the main German line of defense, General Patton's army has fought its way to the same river. That's 270 miles into enemy-held territory. It's the most important push in the war. But General Patton has outrun his line of communication support. He's virtually drinking gasoline, chasing Crouch with 30 caliber bullets. Now he's dangling out there all by himself. 
It's our job to get him off that hook and keep him rolling. No reflection on Patton's ability as a field commander, General, but military history has proved that war is an inchworm. The head has to stop while the tail catches up. Now our supply line... Right now, Colonel, General Patton is rewriting military history. He's already demonstrated that many military concepts are obsolete, especially our concept of supply. But, General, how do you supply an army that's moved as fast as his? There are no forward airfields worth discussing, and it'll take our engineers 60 days to put those railroads back into shape. I'll tell you how we're going to do it. With trucks. Trucks and more trucks. We'll clear our own private route. We'll make it off-limit for everyone, from French civilians to combat units. We'll set up our own one-way private road to Patton and back. But that road will have to go through points that Patton's bypassed. How do trucks get through enemy pockets? They fight their way through. What's your vehicle situation, Colonel? Well, they could have better than 6,000 trucks ready to roll by morning. All right. Before we leave Le Mans tonight, we'll have a beachhead to front Red Ball Express. One way out and one way back. General, we might have the trucks, but we haven't men enough to put in all of them. Then get the men. Every man in the ETO who isn't shooting or kicking krauts out of their holes is going to find himself pushing a truck. All right, gentlemen. We we'll reassemble here at 1300. Put all the plans together and get this red ball rolling. And hut! I'd give a six-hour pass if I knew what this was all about. I already did. I still don't. And stop beating your brains out thinking. You do guess it, right? They'll change the whole thing. Even if they have to lose the war. You know, this is the highest price quiz show of all times. We're in the Transportation Corps, aren't we? That means we'll be driving trucks. Yeah. The kind of work they don't care who does. Trucks? Who wants to drive a truck? Nobody. And most of all, me. You know, somebody ought to tell the government what's going on over here. A year and a half we train. The fighting 104th, they call us. Yeah, now I know what it means. Only 104 of them are going to fight. The rest of us are going to wind up as wheel jockeys. Now, why don't you stop beefing? Driving a truck is the softest touch in the world. You sit down all day long. You pick up some stuff here, you put it over here. Nobody breathing down your neck. Carry a couple of jugs of cognac. At Mademoiselle's, what they won't do for a ride and a gallon of gasoline to take home to Papa can't be done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you make it sound like heaven. I wouldn't even want to drive a truck in heaven. You know, I don't know the first thing about one of these gadgets. Oh, that's a cinch. Take you ten minutes to learn. Well, back in the States, I pushed rigs from one coast to the other. All kinds of weather. Rain, snow, desert. Yeah. Yeah. Say, let me tell you about the time I was on the Mojave Desert run. It was 120 in the shade, and I was loaded with popcorn. Now, all of a sudden, this stuff started to pop. <laughs> Would you believe it? By the time I got to Phoenix, all I had to do was add the butter and the salt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very entertaining. Oh, that was nothing. Once I was driving in the Rockies, see? Rockies? And it was... Yeah. I pushed a few rigs over those hills myself. Oh? Pretty cold, wasn't it? Hey, hey what are you working on there? A, a formula for a secret weapon? <laughs> well, this... This, my friend, is my future fortune. The first real novel that's going to come out of this war. Well, uh, what are you going to call it? How do I know? Haven't finished it yet. What, what, what? Why, why, why? Look, Shakespeare, if you write anything about this outfit, leave me out of it, will you? I'm beginning to feel like an end man in a minstrel show. Then why don't you tell a joke? Well, come on, he was only kidding. Get a bug in its ear. That's new. Don't it always? Hurry, 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 and then you never go anywhere. <laughs> well, this time the Army's gonna make it up to you. This time you're really going someplace. Hey, Sarge, don't we have at least a general or something in charge of us? <laughs> There'll be an officer here in a minute, wise guy. And when he gets here, I want you to show him you're in the Army. That means you act like soldiers, not clerks, 
messengers or ward boys, even though that's what you were a few hours ago. Detail! Here, hut! Are you, Red? All right, Sergeant, take your post. All right, at ease, men. My name's Campbell. I know you're wondering what this is all about. The Army is setting up the biggest trucking detail in history. They're going to call it the Red Ball Express. It's an old railroad term, meaning high priority freight. We're going to be part of it. Our orders are to load up, catch General Patton, unload, and then drive right back and do it all over again. Load, roll them, unload, roll them until we're dizzy. Well, uh, there isn't anything I can add to that. These are our vehicles right behind us. Two men to a truck. Mount up and follow me when we move out. Sergeant Kelly. It's Mr. Kelly, Sergeant. Company! Hit! Hit! Fall out! Sergeant Kelly. Yes. Put Corporal Green and anybody else you want in the Jeep, I'll drive the lead truck. I thought you lost your taste for trucks. You know how the Army is, Red. You sneaked a look at my Form 20 and found out I was a trucker. They find out from your Form 20 what kind of a trucker you were? Okay, Red, if that's the way you want it. I'll only mention this once. We have a job ahead of us here that has nothing to do with you or me, so... Don't let your personal feelings get in the way of those stripes. Good morning. You mind if I ride with a professional? Say, not at all. I'm one of the Smiths. Call me Taffy. Everybody does. Taffy it is. My name's Partridge. Hey, this is living, isn't it? Excitement, drama, driving the open road, see France the easy way. Well, if you go for this kind of ease, give me just lying around back home. Say, what you doing in civilian life, Taffy? How about that? <laughs> That's what I did. Sat up on those high traps with Eddie Mullaney's band, just keeping the beat. Say, I've heard Mullaney play many times. Out of St. Louis, wasn't it? Out of St. Louis, out of Chicago, out of New Orleans. We've been kicked out of lots of places. <laughs> well, as they say in that other service, I'm glad to have you aboard, Tabby. Let me say, I'm gratified to be riding with a man with your driving background. But after the Rockies, this will probably seem like a soapbox derby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say, uh, I wouldn't like this to get around, but... Uh, how do you start one of these things? <laughs> oh! <laughs> now what? Step on the starter! <laughs> Where is it? Uh, sir, uh, the sergeant said I was to ride in this truck. Hop in. Pull over, Mac. I'm driving. Oh, sure, Sarge. Sure. My name's Hamer. I'm Red Callick. What do you think of this outfit, Sergeant? With an officer like Campbell in charge, not much. What's the matter? You got something against him? Yeah, I got something against him. He killed my brother. We should get to know each other a little better. My name is Andrew Robertson. My friends call me Robbie. Nice to know you, Robertson. I come from Detroit. Worked on the sports desk of a Negro newspaper there. I guess that's because I picked up a medal once in the Golden Gloves. Where are you from, Lieutenant? Hmm? Uh, Colorado. You work for a trucking company there? Yeah. <laughs> that's a coincidence. 
Sergeant Callick's a trucker from Colorado, do you know that? Say, I guess you two knew each other before the service. Look, Corporal, I, I appreciate your interest. If ever I want to go to confession, you'll be the first one I call on. Charlotte. I get it. Take a half hour for chow when I load your trucks. Make it snappy, huh? What do you know, Stu? Stu, Stu, this is new. <laughs> hey, the guy's a poet and don't know it. Lift and load. Lift and load. When the trucks are loaded, Lieutenant, where are we headed? Somewhere off the Seine River. General Patton's still there. Gee, that Patton. He's really making a war out of this. You know, we must be a pretty important outfit to be picked to supply the hottest general in the Army. Court, I have a feeling before we're through, this is going to be one of the biggest things the Army's ever done. You really think so, huh? It could be wrong. I don't think so, sir. You know, it's great to be on a winning team for a change. Back in the high school I went to, we were always getting beat at football. We won just one game in four years, and then only because their fullback dropped the ball behind the goal line. One of our boys tripped and fell on it accidentally. <laughs> what position did you play? I was a cheerleader. With a team like that, you must have had the softest job in school. The softest job? Did you ever try to get up in front of your student body and scream, All right, gang. Remember what they did to us last year? Are we going to let them get away with it again? We are not. Let's have a big locomotive for the team. Tell you what. When the going gets rough, you, you give us a big locomotive for the team. Yes, sir. And one for the fraulein. One for the fraulein. One for the boys. All right, fellas. One for the boys. Sorry to break it up, but gather around, huh? Come on, let's go. Everybody. Here we go. Now listen carefully. Finally got the scoop. Here's the water. In Cherbourg, where we are, San Lo, Paris, Seine River. And Cherbourg's going to be our main supply dump. Pick up the supplies here and move them to a forward supply dump that'll be designated by the Red Ball every day. What's our first objective? A dump north of Paris, somewhere along the Seine River. We'll get specific instructions at a forward control point. Paris is 270 miles from here. By the way those roads are, it'll take us 10 days to get there. We'll make it in a day and a half, driving a maximum speed of 35 miles an hour. Lieutenant, I've seen those roads. You can't shoot a bullet 35 miles an hour down. The roads will be cleared for us. Incidentally, Sergeant, speaking of bullets, I want you to check and see that every man's been issued a belt full of ammunition and a rifle. You gonna shoot rabbits or something? Could be. We better keep our engines hot in case we have to cook them. Oh, in addition to rations, we're gonna be carrying ammunition and gasoline, so I don't have to warn you to be careful. Any questions? Everybody in the trucks. All except you, Sergeant. <laughs> Quit bucking me, will you, Red? I want to make an outfit out of these men. With these gold bricks, troublemakers and misfits, guys other outfits wanted to get rid of? We're going to make a good outfit out of them. The large part of it's going to be your job. Don't worry. If the going gets rough, you won't see me jumping out of a truck and running. You better get in your vehicle.
If his truck lasts long enough, he may learn how to drive. Get the vehicle off the road. I'll check the damage. All right, you deadheads. Move this hunk of junk off the road before it starts drawing roots. Ah, go on your shoes. They squeak. It's dolls. Real American dolls. How can you tell in these outfits? I can tell, all right. I guess I'm just lucky. Well, wonderful. Now that you've established our gender, I don't suppose you'd mind giving us a hand. Take two. I wish I was an octopus. I'll bet he is in the back seat of a car. Well, what's his Red Cross business? Don't tell me there's a disaster up here. We're Red Cross workers, Sergeant. This is our clubmobile. We're supposed to ride this road, serve coffee and donuts to the Red Ball Express drivers. We haven't seen any yet. Well, you have now, sweetheart. I'm one of these heroes you've been waiting for. Break out the grub. Okay, coming up. Hey, you guys! Off your duffs! Ciao! Stay where you are! The situation's taken kind of a twist. The dames are here to entertain the enlisted men, Lieutenant. Coffee, tea, and donuts will be ready in a minute. Tell the men they don't have to line up. We'll bring it down to them. I know this is going to sound stuffy, but there are some men up near Paris who need gasoline and ammunition much more than we need coffee, tea, or donuts. So will you please move? While I'm changing the tire, they can be passing out the refreshments. You're not going to change anything. You'll get in your truck along with the rest of the men. Take it easy, Sergeant. You wouldn't look good with a court-martial. I'll do my own fighting. I bet you could lick them, too, lady. Everybody in the trucks, prepare to move out. Now, oh, this boy's a soul of generosity. In order to have a soul, I hear you gotta be human. We'll take ten here. Have the men check their loads, their tires, their gas and water. Anything else, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I'll put out a four-man security patrol and check the road ahead. Security patrol? Now, look, Lieutenant, this isn't combat we're in. This is behind-the-lines communication zone work. Look, I don't want to tell you your job, I'd but... I'd rather but... you wouldn't. Just put out the patrol. All right, you men! Everybody up here! <coughs> you two Higgins on a double! Come on, let's relax. Relax? Are you kidding? Security patrol. I take it, Sergeant, this is where we sweat out the rest of this dangerous mission. You take it right. Did we ever give the lieutenant the idea for this security patrol, son? I think he read a book on Napoleon once, so now he wants to capture Europe single-handed. <laughs> if there's a crowd within 50 miles of this place, I bet he's laughing himself to death. Hey, how do you laugh in German? <laughs> Grab your guns and take cover away from these trucks! The lieutenant's going. Probably back to Cherbourg to get his transfer. Here, Red. Let's take a look. This crowd's coming around and they'll blow this convoy to bits. Come on, let's go. I'll cover you, Lieutenant. Don't worry about us. Just don't fire unless they attack the convoy.
I'm going to draw that fire ready. You pinpoint him. They're over there in a cluster of trees, but they're low. As long as we stay behind the lip of the road, we're all right. Well, we can stay here all night. I'm gonna try to go around and get behind them. We should get as close to the lip as possible. When I yell, we both go. I was hoping they'd kill you. So you might as well realize what happened just now can happen any time. This isn't what a lot of you guys have been thinking, a bus line or a gravy train. There's hundreds of Germans been bypassed, but a lot of them still figure we haven't won the... I think I'll buy you a slingshot. Are you the officer in charge of this outfit? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Campbell, sir. Don't your men even recognize their own army? Well, yes, sir, but... You might have killed us. I'm sorry, Major. It's the mad man... enough that I had to drive 50 miles back from the front to find a supply column. But then to have it fire at me is a little more than I can take. We had to run in with a crowd, sir. We're a little trigger happy, that's all. I see. Get your men in the trucks. I'll show you where to take the stuff. But, Major, these men need a break. They've been driving 30 hours. A break? Nobody's getting any breaks up where I came from. We need this ammo and gas, and we need it bad. Yes, sir. No SI speedometer is broke. We've done 275 miles in the last 36 hours. Yeah. Hey, that's just what the lieutenant said we'd do. Yeah. Well, this is where we drop it, Lieutenant. This area's been cleared for mines. Where's the Seine River? Just the other side of those hills. As soon as Patton gets another bridge built, his boys will pick this stuff up. Hey, Major, which way is Paris? About ten miles in that direction. Uh, huh. It's not gonna do you any good. The Germans still hold it. Germans? Ten miles away? What's the matter? You're nervous because the crowds are ten miles away? <laughs> it's a little close, buddy. Yeah, well, don't spread this around, but they're only two miles in that direction. Hey, Major. Where are the unloading crews? Sergeant, this is not a reception center. This is war. Up here, we do our own unloading. So let's get the stuff on the ground. Let's move, Sergeant. 
All right, you guys. The next hour will be devoted to physical education. Well, the next thing you know, I want us to pour the gas right in the tanks, load the guns, and pull the triggers for them. Well, I guess this is the life of a soldier. Soldiers? Are you kidding? We're nothing but bus drivers and traveling gas station attendants. Hey, Tabby. You know that book I'm doing on my war experiences? I'm afraid that's getting a little depressing. If you ask me, you've lost readers by the hundreds already. Now, there's no point in you going back empty, Lieutenant. You can give these crowds a ride back to the PW enclosure at Sherberg. We don't have any place to keep prisoners up here. We'll take good care of them, sir. Open, Pete! All right, Red Ball, we got passengers! Hold them up, Sergeant. You know, there's nothing that guy won't have us do to make him look good. that we reached Sherbog, we'll have driven 550 miles for 72 hours without sleep. That's a miracle, Wilson. Uh, I'll have the, the first book. You all right? Fine, fine. How about you? I think so. I just fell asleep. Why don't you two go somewhere to relax and settle your nerves? Yeah, we'll take care of your truck. Wilson, as of now, I'm on detached service. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not selling anything. I just want to talk. Lâchez-moi. De toute façon, vous êtes pas vos conducteurs. Et c'est pas vous que je tourne. Allez vous en. Mm-hmm. Well, I see I'm going to have a little trouble here. Say, uh, do you know the uh, semaphore code? That's uh, hello. You understand? Au revoir. What? That's goodbye. Hey! Hey, what's your name? You! Uh, name? Num! Marie? What that? Cherry? Hey! Hey, wait a minute. All I want to know is your name. Antoinette Dubois. Ronald Partridge. Me, Ronald. Ronald? This is like Tarzan and the Apes. Tarzan? Yeah! Tarzan Jane. No. Antoinette. Wait! I can't run and talk at the same time. Say something to me, even in French. S'il vous plaît. Chauvin. Now, wait a minute. That was English. You don't speak English. Not only do I speak English, I speak English without an accent. That's remarkable. Hey, where'd you get that uh, Chauvin stuff? You have heard, perhaps, of the Eight Air Force? Oh. They were here? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I will shove off. I heard that American soldiers fight for what they want. Honey, if those big wing birds came down out of the sky first, with $280 a month plus flight pay and that line they teach them at basic training, there's nothing left around here worth scrounging for. 
Wait a minute, Rana. You remember? Don't worry about the echo. We just helped send some of them back to the underground. Oh, well. Ah, uh, a friend. Uh, uh, Americano. Uh, amigo. Yeah, Terry. Uh, Antoinette. Say, uh, cigarette, eh? Give us a I'm with her. American. Oh, oui. merci. <laughs> Monsieur, oh. je voudrais vous offrir l'hospitalité de notre maison, s'il vous plaît. Oh, rentrez, yeah, Monsieur. Yeah, yeah. Rentrez, rentrez, yeah. Monsieur. Uh -huh. Rentrez. Je suis très content d'avoir un Américain à la maison. Louise, Louise, amène-toi. Oui, mais qu'est-ce que c'est Un Américain. Ah oui Ma femme, un Américain. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh uh, bonjour. Do, yeah. Et ça, bonjour, ce sont oui. mes deux enfants. Oui. J'en ai une autre, c'est une petite Marie? comme ça, toute petite. Oh. Marie, oh, la voilà. Oh, <laughs> Hi. Elle est gentille, vous savez, c'est une petite gamine, celle-là. Oh, non, 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 vous oh, en faites pas. Oui, ça ne fait rien. Donnez-moi la main, moi je la prends. Ça ne fait rien, ne vous en faites ça. pas. Toi, eh bien, euh, asseyez-vous, asseyez-vous. Asseyez-vous, oh, asseyez 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 Mettez-vous à votre aise, monsieur. Faites comme si vous étiez oui. chez vous, tout à fait comme si vous étiez chez vous. Hein. C'est un Américain, n'est-ce pas Qu'est-ce qu'on va faire maintenant Qu'est-ce qu'on va lui offrir Je ne sais pas, j'ai un peu de pain. Tu restes du vin Très, très peu. Rien, donne-lui ce que tu veux et puis lui donne. Essayons bien ce que nous avons. Sentir. Je te connais. Oh, c'est l'américain, le meilleur vin de la maison. Uh, non, 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 non. Oh, go ahead. Non, 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 non. Go ahead. Non. Oh, oh, merci, merci. I'll get you some food. Oh, non, 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 je vous en prie, mais non. Non, non écoutez, monsieur. Nous avons, prenez -le, non, prenez, prenez cette soupe, elle est très, très bonne, c'est le très Thank you very much, but I'll get oh. you some food. Mais non, oh, mais non, écoutez, non, si vous allez revenir, j'espère. I'll be back. Oh, bon, bon, revenez, oui, parce revenez, que nous allons vous voir. Au revoir, monsieur l'Amérique. Au revoir. Au plaisir, alors, revenez, je suis. Bien attention, alors, au revoir. Bientôt, n'attendez pas très longtemps. There it is, let's take off. Hey, now, wait a minute, I've got to find my buddy first. If he isn't here, that's his tough one. Hey, now, wait a minute, take off. Say, let me borrow your bicycle. I'll come back with plenty of food. Now, you wait for me. I will wait. Down, down. <laughs> you guys grab your socks we gotta be loaded and rolling in 20 minutes we gotta be out of here by 0500 oh man if this is what they call a soft touch i'll go back to combat duty any day now what would you want to go back to combat duty for you know personally i think that this is a pretty okay okay higgins knock it off okay fellas up and at them One for Hitler, and one for the road, if and no. What are they trying to prove, Lieutenant? These men need 40 hours sleep, not four. Patton took the supplies we brought him yesterday and moved up 25 more miles. Guess he needs the supplies more than we need sleep. Are we the only company in this red ball? What's the matter with the rest of them? They were dropping stuff at that forward dump 10 minutes after we left. The line of trucks between here and the front is almost continuous. 
Tomorrow, there'll be a truck every 50 yards of that 250-mile road. A load of supplies will be dropping behind Patton every minute, day and night. what they do? Give you a speech to learn? Look, Red, if you spent half as much time working as you do griping, we'd make an outfit out of these men. Now, get to work. One for Hitler And one for the road Yes and all Good morning, sir. Where do we sleep? Sleep? Where have you been? Oh, that. Sir, if I live to be 100 years old, I hope I never again get into a hassle like the one I just got out of. Due to a failure of the steering mechanism, our vehicle unfortunately sustained superficial damages yesterday. Well, sir, in an effort to follow your example as a thorough and cautious soldier, I felt it my duty to put out a one-man security patrol while the able mechanics were tending to the needs of the vehicle. Well, during the course of my investigation of the surrounding terrain, I flushed out a very suspicious party. She was... He was... It's a very long story, Lieutenant. Okay. They ought to make you go through the whole thing just for punishment. After this, see your French girls on your own time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My own time? <laughs> My own time. Yeah, I had a lot of that. At least two whole seconds a day. We climbed up into those trucks and didn't get out of them for the next three weeks. And you know, I was the guy who once said driving was a cinch. Just a matter of picking stuff up here and putting it down there. Well, my vast driving experience <clears throat> had left out something quite important. Little things like your hands swelling up into two big blisters and your feet getting slow baked on the floorboards. And in between, more aches and pains than were ever squeezed into six feet of human body. Cobblestones, dust, blackout lights and hairpin turns weren't enough, it seemed. Somebody had to throw in eight days of rain, followed by 65 miles of freshly churned mud. The road was not only long, it now became deep, and we fought a war within a war, with time and distance. This mud was strictly GI issue, not to be confused with the ordinary variety. This stuff was composed of two parts glue and one part perversity. Some of the red ballers even claimed that the army had seasoned it with meanness. Meanness squeezed from the first sergeant's heart. But as bad as the mud was, there was always something tougher ahead. Accidents. Sure, we had them, but their wheels would hardly stop turning before a repair crew hauled them back on the road and gave them a little mechanical mothering and sent them back to the job. Then for any of us who got coal, there was an occasional bonfire on the road. Only we didn't stop for a rally. It was our gas and our friends going up. When we hit the towns again, or what was left of it, Tabby kept asking me, where are those mademoiselles who were supposed to be waiting just to throw their arms around us? I was too tired to even think about mademoiselles. And friend, that's about as tired as I ever get. Then just when you thought you couldn't drive another mile, you turned a curve and the Army handed you one of its many surprises. Oh, what is this, Sergeant? It's a relief camp for you red ball drivers. Relief camp? Well, that's nice. Now all we gotta do is get a medal every time we drive 10 miles and it'll be just like the air car. Lieutenant, you better have your men get the gear off the trucks. What for? Well, this is the way we're operating now. While you rest, somebody else drives your trucks. When you get up, you drive somebody else's. Really keeps those supplies moving. That's pretty good. Sergeant, will you have the men take their stuff off the trucks? All right, you men, take your personal stuff off the trucks. Ninety-four fifteen. Outside, mount up. Hey, hey, can we look too, huh? Sure, as long as you don't touch. Hey, boy, this is just my cold. Hey, what are you two days doing tomorrow night? Same thing you're going to be doing, Sergeant, driving. Say, what a romantic item for my book. 
two dames chase me halfway across France and back. <laughs> oh, for rewrites, kid. Before we're through, we'll chase you all the way across France and back. Say, what happened to that lieutenant who doesn't think women belong up here? Oh, Campbell? Who cares about him? Yeah, yeah, forget about him. And how about giving me a couple of those donuts over there, huh? Black boy, you give orders to nobody. You take them. Well, I'm not taking any from you. Lieutenant, he was the I one that said get out of here. You trying to start a riot? Lieutenant, what happened was not that man's fault. Lady, you run your club mobile. I run my company. Now beat it. Get into the tents. And everybody, break it up. All right, go on, break it up. Lieutenant Campbell, sir. Robertson? Come on in. Corporal Robertson reporting, sir, with a request. Why all the formality? It's a formal request, sir. Okay, relax. Tell me what you want. I would like to request a transfer to another outfit. Why? I'd rather keep my reasons to myself, sir. Because of what just happened? That might be a part of it. Because I had to bark at you? Well, it's my job whenever you or anyone else gets out of line. Would you rather have thrown a few more punches? Punches I can handle, sir. Look, Robertson. I'm not educated to all the subtleties of race relationship. But it was never my intention to treat you any differently from anyone else in this company. To the best of my knowledge, I haven't. Transfer, no. no. There aren't any to be had. I don't think any of us wanted to be in this outfit. That didn't make a bit of difference to the Army. It makes even less difference than any of us wants to get out. Is that all, sir? Yeah. Okay, turn out. Thank you, my friend. Oh, hi, Robbie. I just asked for a transfer. Why do you want to do a thing like that? Because I don't like the way I'm being treated, especially by him. Campbell? What can I do about it? Nothing. He outranks us the way we've been outranked all our lives. You ever think you could be wrong? Wrong? Yeah, reading things into Campbell's mind that aren't there. Look, you don't ride with him all day. You don't know. Robbie, I've been all over the world, seen all kinds of people, and this is the greatest bunch of fellas I've ever worked with, even if half of them are white. All I ever heard him do is argue and complain, feel sorry for themselves, and try to take their misery out on somebody else. Now, arguing and complaining isn't bad. That shows they've got spirit. All they've got to do is to get that spirit moving in the same direction. And when they do, boy, you're going to see an outfit grow right up in front of you. One you'll be proud of. Proud? With him commanding. There's nothing wrong with that boy. The day will come, Robbie, when you're going to like that boy. This is no easy job. He's got a lot on his mind, and the best thing we can do is to try to help him work it out. How did this happen? About a half an hour ago, sir. Why hasn't the road been cleared? We don't have equipment, sir. Our convoy will go around it. We'll leave our record here to clear the road. I wouldn't advise that, sir. This area is pretty heavily mined. Why don't we send someone back to the next control point for an engineer crew? Well, we'll be here all afternoon. Red ball will be piled up from here to San Lo. Yeah, no, we can't wait. I'll take the first truck through myself. Could you get back in your vehicle? Yes, sir. I'll circle the craters, sweep the ground with a machine gun. There are any mines of bullets should explode them. 
All we need is a craft ten feet wide. Sergeant, will you get the men together? Yes, sir. All you men assemble up here! On the double! Stay on the road! Keep close to the trucks! All right, here's the situation. This, this area around here is undoubtedly heavily mined. We can't wait for the end. Stop that truck! I'm taking it through, Lieutenant. There's a big locomotive, but it's easy. Convoy stopped for. Holding services for one of our men, Captain. Chapman will take care of that, Lieutenant. Hop in your trucks and get moving. Take your helmet off, sir. Do you move or do I put you under arrest? Court martial a whole outfit if you'd like. Dear God. This is Private Davy McCord. Good man. He always said he, he wanted to win something someday. He never did. Maybe you could fix some kind of a prize for him. He earned it. Amen. Something you wanted to get? No. Just try and make up the lost time. Lieutenant, have your men put this stuff back in their trucks. Why? There's a tank outfit bogged down on the road 15 miles up. You'll have to move up alongside and unload. All right, hold it. Put everything back in the trucks and prepare to move out. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> hey, do you suppose they're going to drop this stuff behind the German line so it'll be waiting for Patton when he gets there? You know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. My family used to say, that boy, Ronald, he'll go far. At the time, I didn't realize how far they meant. <laughs> Good morning, Lieutenant. Good morning. How's it going? Well, it's going to go a lot better since you're here, thanks. Good. All right, Red, get him unloaded. All right, let's work on this truck first. Say, Lieutenant, with your permission, I'd like to have some of your guys help us, huh? Sure. Max, get the boys and give them a hand, will you? Okay, you guys. On the double. How many tanks have you got here? Well, we have ten, but there's more coming up. Put them in the trucks. Take them out of the trucks. Put them in, in the trucks. Put them in the trucks. Take them out of the trucks. That's a good rhythm. Hey, what happened? You boys take the wrong road? You're up here with the men are doing the fighting. Oh, well, we came up here to check on a rumor that you fellas were selling this stuff to the crowds. There we are. But you ought to see the price they're paying for it. Now, you jokers, I got a soft touch. You not only sit around on your butts all day driving around the country, but when you get here, we have to do your work for you. Lift and load. 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 They uh, look like they worked pretty well together. Yeah. Good outfit. Are you guys in a gravy train? What is this, an army outfit or a minstrel show? 
If you think this is a gravy train, I'll swap your jobs. You drive my truck and I'll drive your tank. Are you kidding, buddy? You think I'd leave one of Patton's tank companies for a lousy 4F gold brick outfit like this? You know, Sergeant, if I were you, I wouldn't talk about the Red Ball Express that way. Oh, the Red Ball Express. Well, we call it the Foul Ball Express. Oh. Oh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. What do you mean? Your boys are liable to get hurt. My tank is that tough. We better stop this. Come on. Now, now, if there's anything I ever learned in life, it's not to interfere in other people's fights. See this scar? I got that trying to be a peacemaker. I don't see any scar. It's there, all right. Come on, I'll tell you about it. Enjoying yourselves, gentlemen? No, yes, sir. Page, hush, hush! Page, hush, hush! Page, hush! Fall in! Fall in! I've always said that men enjoy a fight. And don't believe anybody who says I'm a liar. But the battle is up there ahead of you. Save your fists and your energy for the fanatics who got us into this war. Don't use them in petty arguments with the men who supply the lifeblood to your fighting outfit. If it weren't for the Red Ball Express and the men in it pushing through supplies, we might never be able to keep attacking. And every day we can attack means we're that much nearer the end of the war. Now get over and help those Red Ball drivers load whatever you need into your tanks. And whenever they hand you a gallon of gas or a bullet, be grateful. Because it might be the one that saves your life and the life of your country. And when you're through, tankers, meet me two miles down the road. We'll see how eager you are to fight there. All right, Sergeant, get the men back to work. Yes, sir. Back to their trucks. Uh, hey, Sarge, how'd you like the minstrel show, eh? <laughs> Good out. Well, Tabby, we're almost there. Partridge, we passed that little French girl every three days for the past five weeks without stopping. If I know anything about women, and I do, <laughs> she just won't wait any longer. Oh, she'll be there and lovely as ever. What have you got? Her bicycle. <laughs> now don't you be in a hurry, Tabby. Don't worry about me, don't you be. He's got some inquisitive mechanics. Okay, what's wrong with it now? I don't know, Mac. I just happen to close my eyes and all of a sudden she stops. Just like that. Poor little thing. Do you expect she could just be tired? Nah. Every time you didn't stop, I worry. I think maybe you're dead. Would it make any difference? I certainly would. You had my bicycle. <laughs> Well, you can put in your diary that I would have come back even if I were dead and didn't have your bicycle. I like you. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. Here's the food I promised you. I guess you're a little hungry by now. Oh, no. Three weeks ago, I stuffed myself with a cracker or two. I'm sorry I joked about it. Next time, I'll be around a lot sooner. Well, you can put in your diary. I would have waited for you, even if I just finished a banquet and I didn't need my bicycle.
Hey, who are you trying to kid? There's nothing wrong with this truck. Step on a starter. Would you mind turning on a switch, please? The switch? Oh. Yeah. Then throw it in low and keep on moving. Come on, come on. Well, what about my buddy? I can't just leave him behind. Look, pal, most of the things we do in this army are things we can't do. Now get moving. Hey! Hey! Oh, no. Well, they did it again. Honey, I'm gonna have to borrow your bicycle, but I'll be back. Yes, sir. I want to talk to you. I got some news you might like to hear. What news is that, sir? We give him permission to approve request for transfer. I'm honoring yours. You'll be in another outfit within an hour. Lieutenant, I'd hoped you'd forgotten that. I don't want to transfer, sir. Okay. Thanks. Hey, I see you got yourself some very talented labor. <laughs> Not bad, huh? How'd you get them so interested in the work? Well, it wasn't me, it was you guys. They said when they saw all these supplies moving up, they figured the war was as good as over. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, now that's the way I like to fight a war. Let the enemy do it for you. <laughs> That's nothing. Watch this. Hey, pretzel! Ein! Spy! Left on load! Left on load! Bun load! Left on load! Bun for little Adolf! Bun for little Adolf! And bun for the Cleveland Indians! Florida sextant, but it kills me. <laughs> Got a union. <laughs> so long. Hey, Partridge! Where you going? Partridge! Hey, is that really you, Higgins? It sure is. And you? You can't be Wilson. Who'd you think I was, Eisenhower? <laughs> oh, you could have fooled me. This is the first time I've seen you guys clean. <laughs> hey, we got clean uniforms and showers and shaves. What happened? Germany surrendered? Oh. No, 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 no. Campbell did. He gave us four and one half hours off. Not because he wanted to, because the trucks are so beat up they won't run. And look, hide that, will you? Before he figures out some way for us to take supplies up the patent by bicycle. <laughs> hey, why don't you lay off, Campbell, for a while? Yeah, I'm tired of hearing you gripe. Well, you're getting to sound as bad as Wilson. A joke. <laughs> we'll all be at the Maison Duo, Partridge. You can join us there, huh? <laughs> Nothing in the world's gonna stop me. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you. <laughs> Say something else, Charming. Boy, that's easy. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Come, get it. Hey, what did you say? Sorry, fellas, this is high priority merchandise. I got a red bullet right to the bar. Sergeant, don't let me stand in your way. Baby, you're with me. Hey, wait. <laughs> Well, go on, Sarge. You spoke for. Hey, baby, you speak English? What's the matter? English a dirty word? <laughs> What's your pleasure? Oh, you've had a few. No, no. I mean, I'm just intoxicated by your presence. Come on, aren't you gonna let me buy you a drink? Vermouth cassis. Vermouth? Uh, cassis? Cinema. <laughs> Um, how did you find your way here? Oh, we had to come to Cherbourg for some supplies, so we thought we'd take in the sights. Why aren't you men on the road? Simon Legree gave us a couple of hours off. Maybe just so he could think of something dirty to do to us when we get back. Why do you dislike him so much? He, my brother Al, and myself were close friends once. So, what did he do to you? Well, Hal and Chick were 
driving a double trailer load of gas over the Rockies. Something went wrong with the truck. It jackknifed, went off the roads into the woods, turned over and caught on fire. Campbell jumped out when he saw trouble coming. Al got pinned in the cab. And instead of going back to get him, Campbell turned yellow and ran. Didn't he have anything to say? Any explanation? An explanation? He said he was thrown out of the cab when the truck jackknifed. He was not cold. When he came to, Al was... Hi, Hi. Hi. Whiskey. <laughs> Take off those bars and come outside. You're making a mistake, Randy. So I'm making a mistake. Turn him over to the MPs. Tell him he's under arrest by my orders. Yes, sir. You're sort of throwing the book at him, aren't you, Lieutenant? You know what's on his mind. So you do, too. Well, look, Miss Red Cross, let's get one thing straight. When that truck went up in flames, there wasn't anything anybody could do about it. Are you sure? I hope you never have to see one friend. All right, any of you men here from the 2371 Truck Company, report back to the dump. Toot sweet. That's French for don't waste a minute. Come on. Out here, beyond the regular red ball route, is a spur. And on that spur is Moray, where one of Patton's spearheading tank outfits is bogged down. For the past 24 hours, the Germans have been trying to cut them off. They've closed everything behind them except the road through Groe. And the tank outfit is out of gasoline? Yes. They can hold out as long as their ammo lasts. But if they had enough gas, they could break out of the encirclement. And if they don't pretty soon, we might as well write those tanks and men off the books. We want a small convoy with a maximum load to sneak through before the Germans know what happened. Now, Lieutenant, your trucks are outside being loaded. Get them out of here in the next 15 minutes and drive like you've never driven before. And don't let anything stop you. If you make it, you probably won't get a medal. But you'll save an awful lot of good men. Here's Sergeant Callick for you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Captain. Come on, get out. What about the charges against him? He's being released to me. I'd rather take the rap. Shut up and come with me. had a bazooka. Hey, if anything happens, give him the stand to Annette, will you? That's all I've got. Hey, where are you going? Tonight I'm a bazooka.
it. Let's get rolling. Made great time, Lieutenant. But I'm afraid you're a little too late. Tag outfit captured? No, but it's just a matter of minutes. Kraut set fire to Moray and they're completely cut off. It's impossible to get to him now. Do we have to go through Moray? Well, there's only one road, and that was it. Do we have to go through Moray? Well, it's very dramatic, Lieutenant. But how are you going to get all this gasoline through a burning town? Look at that. Burning like election night. Anybody get through that, they can land a job in a circus. Are you think any of those truckers will try to get through that furnace? If they do, I'll eat these stripes. I can't blame them much, though. Those guys get all the work and none of the glory. This is glory? going to drive through that? Well, at least we'll be able to see the road. Seems to me it might be a little dangerous if one of the trucks gets stalled in that fire. You get stalled in there, buddy. You'll be driving the only 10-wheel Roman candle in France. Okay. We go as fast as we can. Only remember, don't crowd anyone. Keep 20 yards apart. At the bottom of the hill, you find the main drag. It's the only street that goes through the town. You make a right turn into it. If the street is blocked, ride over it, around it, climb a building if you have to. But don't stall your truck. If you do, you'll pile up everybody behind you. Sergeant Kallick will take the lead truck. Good luck. I pull out, you can swing around me. Yeah, sure. What truck are you going to be in, Lieutenant? The last? Look at that, it's murder! Oh, it's murder!
She'll be there waiting. She always is. Well, sir, you want to hear all about it? This time, yeah. Well, I jumped out of that truck before it hit the tank, and I rolled off the road and hit my noggin on a rock. When I came to, you'd gone, so I picked up a bicycle, but I couldn't catch you with that, so I uh, <laughs> just pedaled back here and, uh, kill a little time, so... Oh. <laughs> Here's your notebook. Oh! Boy, have I got a chapter to write. <laughs> Okay, take that. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. As a matter of fact, take 20. Cup of coffee, Red. Live and low. Live and low. 